Captain and Tangela too. And our host, Vincent Van Dahl. And he brings it to ya! Creature features! And all creatures! What's up with that one? She thought hula hooping during the commencement would be in the spirit of tonight's film. Uh, of course. Our film tonight is Zombies of Moratau. But does she not know that hula hooping has nothing to do with traditional Hawaiian hula dance? Apparently not. I also attempted to explain that Moratau has nothing to do with the Hawaiian Islands, but is instead a fictional location on the coast of Africa. She refuted these facts by accusing me of being a total butthead. She has a way with words. Welcome to Creature Features. I am your host, Vincent. The lovely little compromario in the background would be my charming housemate, Tangella. And the sullen bloke to this side would be my worldly and sophisticated butler, Mr. Livingston, who unfortunately happens to be easily off-put by puerile insults delivered by ill-mannered debutantes. But enough about them, because we do so have a most fantastical program in store for you tonight. As previously alluded, we shall tonight present Zombies of Moratau from 1957. This is a rather nicely done film, which we've never shown prior. Most impressive in the cast is Marjorie Eaton as Grandmama Peters, an impressive actress that actually later portrayed the Emperor in The Empire Strikes Back. It's true, mate. Look it up for yourself. Miss Eaton was actually born here in the Bay Area in Oakland, California, and was a skilled painter. But enough about her and the film. Let's talk about our guest, shall we? For joining us tonight will be the hugely talented and hilariously amusing actor, John Capellis. He's been in too many productions to name in this short commencement, but you'll likely remember him best for his John Hughes days as Carl the Janitor in The Breakfast Club, Dino in Weird Science, and Rudy the Oily Bohunk in Sixteen Candles. John will tell us about those and many other roles he's done over his long career, tell us what he's up to next, and give us his take on tonight's film. So don't go away, because it shall be another night of monochrome zombie fright, right here on Creature Features. Isn't it about time for this one to leave the nest? Nonsense. She's still my muse, and I would rather miss the pitter patter of her little boots running around the mansion. Stay tuned. Portions of this program are brought to you by Micromat, making products that keep your Macintosh running at its best. Welcome to Creature Features. It's going to be a wonderful night tonight. You know why? Because we've got John Capellos. You know, I, I, I'm confused about how to say your name. You said Capellos, mm -hmm. and I said Capellos. Oh, Capilaus or Capala. Capilaus. I like or that one. Capulus. Capulus. Um, you can say it any number of ways. I say Capilos. Capilos. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like a cape that was lost. They used to say in high school, crap a lot. No, they would not say that to you. Yes, they would, Well, if they could only see you now, right? Yes, and they try to. He's done everything. No, every single movie you've ever seen, besides things that were done like in the 40s, well, he yeah. has been in. I've done uh, industrial films. Industrial films, yes, those I are did. great. 
I did a film how to screw in a light bulb. <laughs> no, that, that would not require three people to film though, right? No, One, no, would hope. One would hope. So thank you so much for coming up. How was the trip up? It was wonderful. It Smooth was great. Smooth flight. It was wonderful. It was nice. Yeah, and it, you didn't get attacked by any birds? No, 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 nobody attacked me. No birds, no uh, flight attendants, nobody. He was telling me during the break that he knew Suzanne Pluchette. I did. Who was, who was in the birds, and she was eaten by birds, right? Yeah, she was eaten by birds, and she's, uh, she was a fantastic individual. I really, really liked Suzanne. She was mm. a great person. She swore like a truck driver. Oh, we love truck drivers, especially yeah. the swearing part. Anyways, we're going to watch this movie tonight, Zombies of Mora Tau, and I know for a fact you have not seen it. No, I have not. It was made in 1957, the year after I was right. born. Right, right. So you could have seen it. Now, you were born in Canada, right? Yep, Kenyatta. So would they show American spooky movies up there? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I grew up, I, my mother was an American, and she would make me watch American movies. Oh, it's just so you could, like, fix the accent. Right. Yeah. Well, she would uh, yeah, indoctrinate me with her. So American you would say films. about instead of about. Yeah, she would. She would. Uh, yeah. yeah. Right. My mother was from Boston. So she would say oh, have cornflakes and we would corn say they're cornflakes, mother. Oh, I love Boston yeah. accents. Park yeah. the car in Harvard Yard. Yeah. Park the car in Harvard right. Yard. Scully yeah. Square, Georgie and Johnny. And all that sort of stuff. Good at this. Yeah, well, of right. course, he's an actor. He would be good at this. All right. Let's say we start the film and we come back. I'm going to talk to you about everything. All Columbia right? Pictures, right? Harry Cohn. Columbia Pictures. pictures right? Wide and screen. Yes. No, it's going to be nice. You're going to like it. Off we go. Zombies of Mora Tau. See you on the other side of the break. Sorry, Miss Jan. Sam, I think by now you know every hole in this road. I know all the holes, Miss Jan, but on this road there's no place to go but in them. Well, it's a good thing Africa hasn't completely changed. I was afraid after 10 years you'd be driving me home on a super highway with drive-ins on both sides. Nothing much has changed in this part of Africa, Miss Jan. Not in 10 years. Not in 50 years. Sam! Sam, stop! You hit a man! It wasn't a man. It was one of them. Sorry, Miss Jan, but I couldn't stop. There's your grandma now. She'll tell you I was right. She's waiting for you. You're trembling. We hit a man. Right over him. Not a mile down the road. Sam wouldn't stop. I saw him, ma'am, with the seaweed on him. He stood in the middle of the road and tried to stop the car. Get Miss Jan's things up to her room. But that man, he's badly hurt or, or dead. There's no one on the road. Remember that. I saw him. Sam saw him. He admits it. Go inside now. And freshen up, Jan. So you still believe in this voodoo? I thought it was a nightmare from my childhood. I thought everything would be different now. Later on, Dad, you'll decide for yourself. I'm sorry you had to start like this on your first night back. Here's to a calm crossing, which we already had. The hook dragged anchor at 18 fathoms. Okay, okay, lower the launch. Okay, sir. No, I don't want any more things. <laughs> and here's to a million bucks in diamonds, which we're soon gonna have. 
You're getting drunk. <laughs> Why not? In a few days, I'm going to deck that lovely, beautiful body of yours with diamonds from head to toe. Now, what would I do with diamonds on my toes? Never mind. It was a sweet thought. And what are you going to do with your diamonds, Jeff? Me? I'm going to stuff mine in a nice little box I rent at the First National Bank in New York. Oh, now that's real romantic. Uh, you're listening to Port, Mona. Your husband's the man over there. Can't you take a friendly little kiss without trying to make something out of it? Now, how about me, Mona? Don't I get a kiss, too? You don't get a cut of the diamonds, Doctor. Well, if I had known what went with them, I would have insisted on a share. Well, listen to the old boy, a regular Romeo. Lunch is ready, sir. Shots, fool! I tell you, I hit him, whoever it was. Both times. More likely you hit Johnson. Huh? He's dead. I couldn't have hit him. I'm not that drunk. I don't think you did. His neck's broken. Well, who did it? Who was that? Get the others. Let's get them to shore. such things at school. I thought it was a man. I saw him walk right into the water. Came down to watch the ship arrive. I didn't expect him so soon. But after what happened to you on the road, I knew they'd be here tonight. Peters, I'm Dr. Eggert. I've been expecting you. This is my great-granddaughter, Jan Peters. How do you do, Miss Peters? This is George Harrison, Mrs. Harrison, and uh, this is our diver, Jeff Clark. One of my men has just been murdered. I know. I heard the voices and the shots. What's going on? I wrote. I warned you of the danger. You mean that voodoo stuff? It was a man. I fired at him. And you hit him. But it didn't help, did it? I want the police. The police will do you no good, Mr. Harrison. They're far away. We'll have to bury the poor man. Tonight? Well, he's dead. May as well bury him. Police want to dig him up later? That's their business. <laughs>
This brief moment of tranquility has been brought to you by Nightscape. Relax and sleep better every single night with this and other videos from our free YouTube channel. Learn more by visiting nightscape.co today. Welcome back to Creature Features. If you're just joining us, you're somewhat rather tardy, but it's all right. We'll forgive him this time, right? Yeah. All right. Uh, we are with John Capellos, and uh, we are watching Zombies of Moratel quickly on this movie. Zombies, you just ran him over. Yeah, man. I'd like, like to see a few agents get run over like that. <laughs> no, that's that's true. But you, they should put up one of those signs like they have like in San Diego that show zombies running across yeah. the road. Zombies, yeah. Exactly. Right. No, no, no. To warn you that you might stumble well, upon some zombies. It's horrible to see zombies treated like that. That wouldn't happen today. Right. That no, no. Happen. They have, they have like, uh, they have people like advocates. Yeah. You know. Well, zombies, you know, should, should, you know. And the zombie law. Well, you know, I think that zombies really uh, should have a lobby. They should have a zombie lobby. Right, right. Uh, yeah. It's it's a different time. You know, back then, zombies really were not protected. It's not. And it's, uh, they were really maltreated. But things are different. Things are better now, right? Well, we're we're you, enlightened. You would like to think so. Speaking of which, I want to talk about things you've done. He's been in everything. I've already established that. Yeah. The Shape of Water. We're yeah. going to talk about that later. But um, you did, like... Almost every single John Hughes film. It well, seems. not really. I only did th I only did uh, three, and Breakfast I was Club, uh, Breakfast Club, Weird Science, Weird and Science. Um, Sixteen Candles. Right, right. So, John Hughes, how did you meet him? Um, I auditioned for Sixteen Candles uh, in nineteen whatever eighty something or other, and I, we met. And uh, he was from suburban Detroit, and I was from suburban. One in Ontario, we sort of got along, right. Sim similar. And those two are close, right? Somewhat, Somewhat, two and a half hours away. We really right. got along. We right. really got along. And John was a smart, clever guy. And I like to think that maybe I had similar qualities at the time. And that was a big role. I mean, you're all over that film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, Rudy Rizchek was my name. Right. And then the fiance. Mm -hmm. She's what, what's wrong with her? She took a pill. And she took some sort of muscle relaxant. Right. And. Uh, and you're carrying her through yeah, the whole film. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, her mother was a very famous actress in her day. Her mother was Carol Baker, uh, the sex know. bomb. Uh, oh, really? She was in uh, Baby Doll, with, um, which was an Leah Kazan movie oh, in the wow. late 50s. I don't know if we're talking about quality movies now. But, right, right. Uh, but uh, Blanche Baker was uh, my wife's name in Sixteen Candles. Oh, how wonderful. And, uh, but that was a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun to shoot. A lot of great actors in that sequence, too. And Max so that's the one you did first. Yep. So that Breakfast Club came next? Um, 16 Candles and then Breakfast Club. Breakfast yep. Club. And you were Carl. Carl. The it shot that a couple of years, maybe a year and a half later. Um, yep. Oh, wonderful. wonderful. And then we did uh, a Weird Science and then I did Ferris Bueller. I want to Bueller, talk about Weird Science. And then I got excised, cut out of... We had one of the stars from Weird Science right in that chair you're sitting in. Who was that? I'm going to tell you when we come back. We gotta get back to the film, though, right? Yeah, let's get back to this. Film. Let's get back to Zombies of Moratau, and when we come back, we're gonna get more great stories from John Capellos. Don't go away, please. These are the graves of the first group that came after the diamonds. That was in 1906. They were British. This was a German expedition in 1914, just before the outbreak of war. What I want to know is, how'd they all die, Mrs. Peters? Another British group tried their luck in 1923. Portuguese in 1928. First American showed up ten years later, 1938. Your 
Yours is the sixth attempt to recover the diamonds. Whose graves are these? The first one is for your dead sailor. The others for the rest of us. She's trying to scare us. She wants the jewels for herself. I've learned that no one who comes for the diamonds can be frightened away. <laughs> and have the large guest room. According to Eggert, the Susan B. is lying in about 100 feet of water on a sandbar. Say, uh, where is Eggert? He's having a powwow with the old lady. <laughs> Maybe you can find out why the old lady was so anxious to have those graves dug in advance. Now, if the sandbar hasn't moved, it should be about here. Well, this one baffles me. It's, um, it's pre-Christian, of course, but it, um, it doesn't seem to be truly African. You know, it's closer to those figures on Easter Island than anything I've seen. You've picked the prize of the collection quick enough. <laughs> I guess you do know something about Africa. Just who are those people you're with? Well, as I wrote you, I've spent 20 years researching the legends of the Susan B. Mr. Harrison owns the salvage ship. He came for the diamonds. I came for the story. I think I'd die happy if I could complete the research on my book. Not that I'm eager to occupy one of those graves. Only fools are afraid of the grave. There are worse things. Bodies around here must be buried quickly, Dr. Eckert. You mean the climate? No. I don't like to explain to idiots who think I'm in my dotage, but you should understand. Walking dead. You believe in them? And so will you before the week is out. My husband, Captain Jeremy Peters of the Susan B. He was one of them. That picture was made over 60 years ago. He looks almost the same today, except for the eyes. I've seen him. You know the story. The Susan B. put in here for trade in 1894. The sailors discovered a temple with a golden cask full of uncut diamonds. They stole the cask. There was a fight, and ten of the sailors were presumed dead, the captain among them. The others returned to the ship with the cask. Then, surprisingly, the ten missing men appeared. Something happened. The rest of the crew was slaughtered, and the ship scuttled in the bay. You think that these ten men that had been killed returned to their ship? They were dead then, and they're dead now. But they're still guarding those cursed diamonds. One of them killed your sailor tonight. He killed everyone who's come for the diamonds. But the murderers, your own husband. They're dead, I tell you. They have no morality, no free will. They'll kill anyone who tries to steal the diamonds. But what about you? Oh, don't bother me. They seem to know I don't want their precious treasure. It was more than 50 years ago that I heard rumors that my husband was seen around here, and I came back to find out. Slowly, I pieced the story together. I built this house. You want to be with him, with your husband, this dead man? 
I came to help him return to dust, to find his eternal rest. But how? How can you do that? Cool woman again. you get the diamonds. Where'd he go? You'll never find him. Well, I'm clearing out. Diamonds or no diamonds, I'm getting out of here. You're staying. George, you saw that thing. I came here for the diamonds. I'm staying and so are the rest of you. But if you knew there'd be all this trouble, people killed, why did you let them come? I didn't let them do anything. Edgar wrote and told me they were coming. I don't own the diamonds or the bay. But you wanted them to come. Yes. I want them to find the diamonds and then destroy them. Only when the diamonds are destroyed will your grandfather be able to rest. Destroy them? Do you think Harrison is the kind of a man who would destroy the diamonds after going to all the trouble of finding them? Throw them away because of an old wives' tale about men who died 60 years ago but aren't dead? If they ever find the diamonds, they'll be glad to destroy them. I know what I have to do. And this time, there'll be an end to the diamonds and an end to the walking dead. This is Livingston, and you're watching Creature Features. Not now. Stay tuned. Creature Features is brought to you by CreatureFeatureStore.com, the official merchandiser of Creature Feature accessories. Welcome back to Creature Features. Mr. Capella's had to step away for a moment. You know, I think he had to take a call from his agent. He got another offer of some kind. He's a busy man. No, he's a he's a he's a well-paid thespian, I believe. Well said. Yeah, no, he's he's talented too. Anyways, it's time for us to do that thing, letters, because he sent us letters and stuff, and we have to do them, right? Right. What do we got, Mr. Livingston? Something from Carmel, California. Carmel, California. How are you, Tangela? Good. She, she did a pretty good job with the uh, hula hoop thing demonstration. It's not Hawaiian, but... It's not appropriate, but... Why but, was but it not well, appropriate? But well hula No, she's, she's, she's inspiring people to do physical activity, which is good. I can use a bit of it myself. All right, this letter is from Tim Blomgren. That name sounds familiar. He's from Carmel by the Sea. You know this place? Yes. And he goes, uh, Dear Vincent, Mr. Livingston, and Tangela, hello again from Carmel by the Sea, not Volcano. Thank you for clarifying. So he did write to us before, because he knows. So I get confused with the two. There's Carmel by the Sea and Carmel by the Volcano, and I, I don't like the Carmel by the Volcano. It's itchy. Ah. I don't know. Uh, it's sulfur or something. 
I enjoyed viewing the House That Would Not Die movie. However, I originally thought it would be a documentary about my neighbor's crazy remodeling job, which was far scarier than anything Barbara Stanwyck's daughter could dish out. Which, you know, could be right. Because you, anytime you live next to a restoration of that kind, there's lots of noise. Yes. I could not handle this. I need to clarify a couple of things about Carmel. Although the Hog's Breath restaurant is still in business, Clint Eastwood no longer owns it. He does, however, still live in the area, I know where, but it is a local secret. Plus, I'm worried that Tangela might find out and make a trip down there, and nobody wants that. You wouldn't cause any harm, Clint Eastwood, would you? You know, our, our prior guest, uh, Pamela Ferdin, she was the first person on in a movie to kill Clint Eastwood. Really? Yeah, in The Beguiled, she killed him. It was the first time in a movie he'd been killed. Imagine that. So... You'd have to worry about Pamela and not Tangella. At any rate, here is some dough to help with Hanju's medical bills. Could I have an autographed picture of you guys? And he sent us a check for 50 American dollars. That's a lot for a bloody photo, but yes, of course, we'll send you an autographed photo, I assume, to this address. Yes, to this address. And, uh, you know, we don't sell those autographed photos, do we? Not really. When we, when we do a show, sometimes we'll sell the photo and we aut autograph for free, right? Yeah. But uh, we don't sell the photo. So if you want to send us a contribution of any reasonable size, something that's not insulting, right? If they send me a check for five cents, I will be insulted and I will send them back their check and I will give their address to Tangela to send another gift as well. But if you send something reasonable, we'll send you an autograph photo. How's that for an offer? Sounds reasonable. Yes, quite reasonable. Thanks for uh, sending this to us, Tim, and uh, we will uh, see you soon in your mailbox. Next, Mr. Livingston. Looks like an email. Indeed. And this one is from Uncle Mikey, and he spells it with four E's after the mic. And he goes, subject, coffee 20 drops creature features. Being one of the original followers of Creature Features from its start in Sacramento launch through KTVU and Bob Wilkins through John Stanley and now the reinstatement of the new Creature Features, it seems to me the Coffee 20 is being quite obtuse when they think they have better programming for 10 p.m. at night. I grew up with Westerns in the 60s, but to replace Creature Features with Westerns is ridiculous. All around the country there are stations picking up Creature Features along with YouTube and all the other sources for watching Creature Features. So now that James Gabbett is no longer with Coffee TV 20 and Coffee 20 wants to abandon Creature Features, I will be abandoning Coffee 20 entirely. There's no sense or reason to tune into Coffee 20 anymore when it's run by Brontosaurus Brain Power. All right, so uh, Uncle Mikey, I need to explain a few things for you here. Coffee is gone. So Coffee rode off into the sunset and became Grit TV. So, you know, you... Everybody has stopped watching coffee because coffee no longer exists, and that's why we're not on that station anymore. However, um, that only represented maybe 5 10% of all viewers, right? Yeah. And the rest are all over the world on YouTube and Vimeo and all this and all the other stations we do. We're on 40 other stations. 45. So, you know, losing coffee was sad, but it's not that big of a deal. So don't be too mad. Tune into YouTube. Picture looks better anyways, right? Better yes. quality. Better quality. Right. High Last resolution. But not least. We have a package. A package. Oh, it looks like one of these gift boxes, which it is. So I shall take out the letter, if I can find it, and give the rest to Miss Tangella. Oh, this is a handwritten note, but it looks like it was written well. Did you pre screen this? Is there yeah. any bad words in this? None that I could ascertain. All right. So uh, this is from Russell Ledwell in Morgan Hill, California. I think it was a hill owned by Morgan at one time. That's why. Perhaps. I could be wrong. Hello to the gang of Creature Features, Vincent Livingston, Tangela, and everyone behind the scenes that make the show so fun. I've been a fan since the 70s. I catch your show on every Saturday. It's run on cable TV channel 20. What is this? I'm confused. The other, the other bloke just said it's not on 20, and now this one's saying it is on 20. There are 20s on various cables. Oh, is that what it is? So there's like 2020s, maybe. 
Well, it could be 20 on the, in a different area. Where is he from? He's right. He's right. Morgan Hill. So I don't know. The set is cool. The set and cast again. There he goes. And uh, the mansion is scary all by itself. I find that you're a good host. Livingston helps keep the flow of the show going. And Tangella is a fun little nymph. I've never heard you called that before. I have not missed a show, but I am tired of the same reruns of bad movies. How a decent one at least once a month? I have included gifts for you all. Let's see some of these gifts. Maybe you can sign them and auction them off on air or your website. Now, I don't like auctioning things. It's, it's strange. Oh, those look like my gloves. Those are your gloves. No, those are not my gloves. Show me. They are now. No, no. These are made from vinyl. Mine are made from actual cow leather. And they're longer. Naga hide. Naga, they, that's mm. Naga hide. So mm. two pairs of that. What else? Mr. Livingston, a thing. What else? I need to see what he said before I think. Oh, you like those. She loves those. All right. Uh, this could bring in some decent money for decent in-color movies. You know, we've run some good movies. I, I don't know what you're talking about. We've, like, like the one we're running tonight, Moratau, is, is a good film. It is a good it's, film. It's not color. Good quality film. It's a good quality film, but it's not color. But uh, we ran a good color one recently, right? Yes. The, the, the Whatever Happened to Aunt Alice. That was a good one, right? That was very good, actually. And then we did uh, the one with Pamlin, with the, the, the Daughter of the Mine. That was color. So maybe you need to check your glasses, sir. Uh, he continues, uh, I promise I'll keep watching and keep up the good work. Cheers, Russell Ledwell. P.S. Morgan Hill is north of Gilroy Garlic Festival or south of San Jose. That's a nice area. I know exactly where it is now. You have to drive by Morgan Hill to go to Gilroy Gardens. You've been to Gilroy Gardens, right, Tom? It's a beautiful place. It's the nicest amusement park I've ever been to, and I've been to Disneyland Paris. Anything else? What did, what did Livingston get? Thank you. What is it? The mystery. It looks like button covers. Button covers? More button covers. What, oh, my... yin and yang button oh, covers. Oh, look at that. That's very nice. Yeah, he, likes, he likes stuff That's like that. That's very thoughtful. Thank you. It is. It is. See? He likes you already. All right. Is that it? That's it. That is it for mail. If you'd like to send us an email, send it to the address you see appearing over here. Or if you'd like to send a package full of wonderful gifts that make Mr. Livingston smile, send it to the address you see right here. We'll be back soon with Mr. John Capellas, but first let's get back to Zombies of Moratau. you afraid it was a zombie out here? I understand they don't smoke. They're afraid of fire. And you know all about them, too. Only what my grandmother says. And you believe her? No. Then who broke into the house tonight? Who killed Johnson? I wish I knew. I wanted to ask you to leave with the others. Give it up before any more are killed. Do I look like I'm afraid of zombies? Johnson is dead. So are many others buried behind the house. It's not worth the risk. Oh, yes, it is. If those diamonds are half of what they're cracked up to be, my share may come to a million dollars. That's a lot of loot. What is it worth if you're dead? Oh, look, Miss Peters. I may be a dumb diver, but I got an A in arithmetic at PS 81. That's New York. And this is the way it figures. Usually, as a diver, I make a hundred bucks a day. And if I'm lucky, I work three days out of every week. That's 15 grand a year. Now, do you know how many years I'd have to work to make a million? 67 years. You better go back to school, learn how much 60 years of life is worth, or 50, or 20, or even 10. <laughs> All right, I'll make you a promise. If I get that million, or even half, I'll give up my dangerous occupation. I'll never dive into anything deeper than a swimming pool. Or if, uh, if that makes you nervous, I'll, uh, I'll stick to very dry martinis. Not funny? 
I didn't think you'd listen. There's something else. Tonight, when Sam was driving me home, we hit one of those men. Not a mile down the road. We hit him hard, ran over him. We must have killed him. I'd like to find out. So would I. Can we get the car? They're supposed to be afraid of flares. Even if I agreed with you and wanted to quit, it's not my show. It's Harrison's equipment and Harrison's money. That's why he waltzes off with three quarters of whatever we find. Right there, just ahead, I think I see something. It was right over there. Be careful. About here, maybe a bit down the road. Let's look. Remains of your headlamp. It must have hit something right here. What is it? Seaweed. Water and seaweed. You suppose he could have come from the bay? It just suddenly appeared on the road. toward the road. So he did come from the direction of the bay. He must have been hit back there where we found the glass in the button. He was thrown a few yards, run over down there. Let's go back and see what we can pick up back there. Jan, you take one side of the road and I'll take the other. See if you can find some more footprints. Jeff! He just picked himself up and walked away. I'd like to follow these. Tonight? No. I'll get something to mark the place. We'll come back with the others in the morning.
Jan, can you hear me? Try to get away while I back him down with these flares. Portions of this program are brought to you by Micromat, making products that keep your Macintosh running at its best. Who does your hair, John? Uh, my wife. She does a better job than my wife does. Because I don't have a wife. Maybe I should get a wife. I should get married and then I have good hair again. Well. Right? <laughs> Welcome back to the show. If you just joined us, we're with John Capelos. That's right. I'm going to remember that. <laughs> I should have spelt your name with a C. Then well, I say K. K's are funnier. K's are funnier. They are. So, uh, and we are watching uh, Zombies of Mora Tau. So, uh, Grandmama. Mm -hmm. in this movie you saw her she looks like uh she looks like the wicked witch of the west oh somewhat. she does yeah, yeah right yeah. right kind of old she was only like in her early 50s when she did that yeah really oh, yeah she looks yeah, a little bit yeah. older i and i don't think it was makeup i think mm -hmm. she just had one of those faces that you know, i bet she was a, an old looking baby oh what yeah she's what a, but she ended up being uh the emperor in Empire Strikes Back. Really? Yeah. No, wow. they, they stuck the thing on her head, and then they redubbed her voice with a man's voice. Wow. Well, yeah. that, that's a long career, though. I just learned this today. Wow. And she's from here. She's from what, this area? Palo Alto. She was born in Oakland and died in Palo Alto. Oh, so mm -hmm. she didn't have a long way to go. I huh. suppose not. You know, if, if she'd been alive, well, we did the show, I would have had her on as a guest. Not tonight, because I have you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well. He's done more stuff. So Way her name was stuff. Eaton, right? And she married a guy named Hogg, so she became Eaton oh, Hogg. I, you know, I like that. That's an old That's Spinal the way Tap they do joke. American names around here. <laughs> no, no, they, they make them clever. I like that. All right, so uh, on this movie, um, not much is happening, but it will happen soon, and we'll get back to that soon. I want to talk about you and that Please. movie Weird Science. Yes. You were in Weird Science. You had, I was. You were in one of the best parts of Weird Science. Yeah, probably. Probably the funniest scene in the entire film was mm. that bar scene. Yeah, it was a fun scene to shoot. Right, a lot of right. guys in that one. Right. A lot of guys. Right. Now, the, the main woman, what was her name? Kelly LeBrock? Kelly LeBrock, What yeah. was she like? Oh, well, you know, a lot, of, a lot of people liked her. She was going out with a guy named Victor Dre at the time. That sounds devious. Yeah, Victor Dre you... owns a big place in Vegas called Dre's, right? And right. He was a very famous sort of um, type of guy. Uh -oh. And uh, she was the object of a lot of people's fascination. My goodness. She's a very beautiful, beautiful woman. Nice yeah. lady. She's British as well, right? She is. Right, she is. Right, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, God, a lot of people liked her. A lot oh, of people yeah. liked her. And, well, she uh, didn't do much after that, did she? No, I think that she was kind of uh, protected, uh, you know, and coddled by her husband and oh. um, sort of not not really, right. uh, I don't think she was interested in, in being in show business. She much. was so good. Yeah. yeah. She was so good. But you continued... You've mm -hmm. not stopped working. No, I'm a, I'm a workaholic. That's awesome. To. Plus, you know, I'm in debt to the mob, so you know, I have that, to work. Well, not nothing to do with Kelly LeBrock, then. No, right? no, no. no I just, uh, I'm in, you know, for fifty grand large every week. I have to right. pay them. <laughs> well, it's that gambling habit, right? Yeah, yeah, right, yeah, right. yeah. It's better than other habits. Yeah, yeah. Well, me and Phil Mickelson. <laughs> so you were in The Shape of Water. Yes. And did you like the film? When you went and saw I it, did you like the finish? I the movie. You know, it's, it's very rare that you are in a movie that you love. Like, you know, I could have been in this zombie movie, but uh, <laughs> I would have you been. You wouldn't have loved it. No, I wouldn't yeah, have loved it. But yeah. it's really great to be in a movie that you love. And uh, Guillermo del Toro is one of the most fantastic people right. I work with. He is oh, yes. adorable. And he is uh, an artist. Right. He is truly the Fellini. Uh, he does everything, right? Yeah, he's he's really a genius. Right, right. 
Amazing. Truly, truly Amazing. a genius. All right, speaking of genius, let's get back to this film. Oh, yeah. And uh, we're going to find out some about some of these other things you've done. Uh, I didn't know that zombies were afraid of fire. You know, that's a new thing. I always thought it was Frankenstein. <laughs> we'll figure this out. Yeah. All right, off we go. See you on the other side of the break. I remembered how that old lady drove off that joker last night with a torch. I didn't know where the girl was taking me. I figured she was leading me in for a setup. So I grabbed the very gun from the locker. You say this mausoleum in the middle of the jungle is about uh, 40 by 20 feet. And no running water or central heating. If you like, we'll pack a picnic lunch and walk over there. Do you think you could find it again? Oh, I should. You kept me up all night making notes. <laughs> you know, Doc, you're going to have to cut me in on the royalties from your book. I think you were right the first time. I'll give you odds little Miss Sweetness and Light was leading you into a trap. You can bet that she had that old witch at the bottom of what's going on. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Sweetness. Warm milk, Margaret. I want to thank you for saving Jan's life, Mr. Clark. She's very precious to me, and I will be always grateful. Now you got a friend for life, Jack. We all die in good time, Mrs. Harrison. There's a grave waiting for all of us. You old hag! You're dead already. You just don't have sense enough to lie down. Shut up! Well, it's true. She's at the bottom of what's going on around here, and you all know it. I'm sorry, Mrs. Peters, but, uh... You see, she learned her manners as a hostess in Eddie's Front Street Saloon. As She's... I was saying, I'm grateful, and I'll do whatever I can to help you recover the diamond. Thanks, but it won't make any difference now. You see, I've decided to give it up. What? You can't quit like this. I practically taught you the business. You should have taught me the business end of the business. Then I'd be up on deck taking a sun bath and getting 75% while you went below and played footsies with the fishes. We made a deal. I've sunk 30,000 into this. Practically everything I've got. Get yourself another boy. Do the diving yourself. Nobody told me there'd be a crew of cutthroats pushing up the odds. And I don't care who's behind them. Okay. I'll give you another 5%. Maybe he's right, George. We ought to quit. This place gives me the creep. One more word out of you, and I'll... What do you do? Put me in irons. What do you want? I did some arithmetic last night, Harrison. You know, 50% isn't hard to resist. I hope you live to collect it. Oh, but I intend to. You see, I'm counting on you to keep me alive. At least until after we get the diamonds. We're losing the whole morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Peters. You all right? So you're going ahead? Yeah. Harrison talked me into it. Ask Mrs. Peters. But I tell you, I buried that knife in his throat. So you missed a vital spot. Okay, but I should have got a little blood out of that eight-inch plate. Do you believe in the walking dead, Dr. Eggert? All I know is what I've read. What's it say in the books, Doc? Are they supposed to be good swimmers? Well, they wouldn't have to breathe. Well, that's my weakness. I have to breathe. Try to remember that, Harrison. Any last words? Just find the diamond. I'm only gonna try and locate the cabin. Fifteen minutes. Don't get yourself killed, Jeff. It would be such a waste. Can you hear me? Telephone okay? Air pressure okay? All right, let's go.
Say number one helmet of yours is leaking. Front port gasket. Where'd you get it? In the surplus store? Is it bad? Not yet. Keep it coming. 50 feet. Get the other suit ready. Seventy-five feet. How's the leak? No worse. You want to come up? No, not yet. More away. I see something right under me. Easy. I'm looking right into the hole. We're in luck. I think I can walk right into the hole. Maybe I can get in. Right now. You want to try? Yeah. at all. It's less than a hundred feet. But why go down? You're not in position. I'm not gonna let him get his hands on those diamonds without me being there. I see it. I see the safe. Jeff! What's happened? The air pressure reads zero. Is he free? Can you haul him in? He seems to be coming up, unless... Unless what? Unless the cable snap. Well, why don't you go down and see? Well, this is the quickest way. Keep him rolling. Try to get him to a doctor. The nearest doctor is at the Angel Mission. That's five hours driving each way. I do the doctoring around here. Over my dead body. That's his breathing. If we don't do something to help that quick, he may not come out of it. I'll fix something for him. You're not going to let her feed him anything, are you? What do you think? Well, I don't think she's a murderess, but... Uh... But she's out of her head. I don't know if he's breathing at all now. This will stimulate his breathing. Give him about an ounce every hour. Well, it's not that we distrust you, Mrs. Peters, but... Put it down. Give it to him or not, as you please. Wait!
It's potent. But it won't hurt you. I'll let you know if there's any change. Okay, Florence Nightingale. Call me when you're ready to go off shift. Hello, this is Pete from Newcastle, Virginia. Love the show, been watching for years now, and you guys do such an incredible job and show such great movies that I haven't seen before. The Oblong Box is fantastic. Thank you, and keep up the good work. Portions of Creature Features are brought to you by... The Winchester Mystery House in San Jose, California. Explore the mystery at winchestermysteryhouse.com. You know, I don't believe it either. But Walking on the bottom of the ocean, that zombie is amazing. But it makes sense because he's dead. He doesn't need to breathe, right? Yeah, but I mean, you know, zombies, are just, back in the day, those zombies could do anything. I thought, you know, since they burn, you'd think they float. Yeah, well, right. you know, I, I think they have special shoes. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, this yeah, is before especially. Nike, too. Yeah, no, no. The, the, the big Nikes that make, the ones that... Tom Cruise use. Oh, yeah, well, Tom they, Cruise. They make him yeah. tall. I rest my case. Right, right. Yeah, now, yeah. he's a short man. Yeah, in a lot he's of ways. Really short. <laughs> All right. Welcome back to the show. We are watching Zombies of Moritau with our friend John Capellos. Capellos? Whatever. You know, I'm going to get it right. The very last segment, I shall get it right. But uh, we were talking during the break. You said you were on an episode of Seinfeld. I was. I, I like Seinfeld. I did, too. That was fun. And so what did you do? What did you portray? I played his sniffing accountant, Barry oh Prophet. Goodness. Oh, and he had some type of allergy, right? Well, they thought maybe he was doing a little bit of what they call the, oh, the uh, yeah. <laughs> Mexican Snuff. or the Colombian jumping bean juice. Oh, right, right. But... Then they thought maybe he was allergic to a sweater. Oh, that and could do they it. they thought maybe mm -hmm. he was doing the other stuff, and they didn't really know. Right. So the you cold. have to watch the episode if you haven't seen right, it. Right, right. So it was fun doing that. And that was shot in L.A., right? Yeah, it was shot, well, wherever L.A. is. Right, yeah, right. I think it's that way. Right, right. Yeah, it was shot in L.A. And uh, many, many years ago, I had long hair at that point, and I... Oh, nice. Yeah, I had hair. Right, At that right. moment. And it was fun. It was fun. It was fun. It was a lot of fun. Um, three of the cast members were really nice to me. And the fourth. Yeah, there was one that was kind of marginal. Right, right. right. I won't say his name, George but you could... <laughs> Oh, him? No. That was not going to be the one I would guess. No, no, I was just joking. I bet. No, I bet in reality he's a nice guy, but he's under pressure under the Well, lights. they were all under pressure. But I have to say, Michael Richards was one of the funniest, funniest effing guys I've ever worked with. Oh, for sure. He does this thing <laughs> in this episode where he drinks a beer with a cigarette in his mouth and then he gets hit with a, a, a bar, a, a piece of a bar, you know, that opens up, right, boom, hits right. his head. It's one of the funniest bits I've ever had to be. And I had to keep a straight face through the whole thing. If people know this episode. It's, right. It's How many takes? One take. Because, one take? Um, um, uh, what's his name, uh, came up to me. What, what is his name? Oh, right, right. He's got his own show. Yeah, he's got his own show. Right. And he came up to me and says, John, you cannot ruin this take because you never know what he's going to do. So right. um, he was so funny. So, so you just had to keep a straight face. And, well, actually, uh, I bit the inside of my cheek. And at the end of the evening, I had to go home and look at my cheek. It was bleeding. Because but um, he is so funny. Larry David told me, do right. not laugh. Right. Do not laugh. Right. And he's a nice guy, I bet. Larry is very intense. Right. They're all really, really nice, except right. for, you know, the one that, cast member. That, that one guy. Yeah. There's always that one guy. No, isn't I'm there? just joking. Isn't there? Umbrella Academy. Yes. You did that. I did. 
And you played? I played Jack Ruby. Jack yeah. Ruby. Yeah, yeah. My goodness. That was fun. That was, I did the second season of The Umbrella Academy. Wow. And it was kind of a fictive take on Jack Ruby. Right. Um, and uh, the sort of, they do this sort of history mashup. And I played Jack Ruby um, back in 1960-whatever. Right. And that was a really intense, fun thing to do. And they recreated the entire scene. Uh, well, they sort of much. do a bit of a recreation of that time period, yes. Oh, but that's um, incredible. really, really great show and um, really neat character to play. Although um, not entirely historically accurate because they sort of um, use it, as I said, as right. a historical mashup. Right, right. But a great, it's show. It's a great show. Well, that's, that's what Tarantino does with all his films, right? Who? He changes history. A Tarantino, Tarantino bloke. Or Never maybe, heard of maybe him. you know, he would redo Zombies of Moratow. Oh God, so what he could do with this movie? Right, right. I All mean. right, let's let's find out what happens, eh? Yeah. Off we go back to Zombies of Moratow, and when we come back, uh, John's going to tell us another story about something more interesting than this film. Promise. Yes. See you soon. I just can't stand the excitement. Exotic Africa. Wild animals and tropical night. Here I am teaching a professor how to play blackjack. Uh, I have 21. Well, okay, so he owes you another thousand matchsticks. Relax. Well, why doesn't she tell us what's going on? She just told you a half an hour ago. Sleeping peacefully and breathing normally. What do you want, a bulletin every 10 minutes? Well, I'm gonna see for myself. Don't start any trouble. How do you feel? No, no, don't stop. Yes, I finally made it. Soft clouds, golden stairways, trumpets, and angels. Not a chance, Jeff. You're in Africa. And from where I sit, it looks a lot more like the other place. Why didn't you call us when he wakened? He just did. Oh, sure. What goes on here? Are you getting time and a half on this job? Why didn't you call us? I told you I didn't want any trouble. What do you expect a phony caveman act to get you? I told you to stay away from him. Now I'm going to give you the only kind of lesson you seem to understand. <coughs> You'll have to come back. How's Jeff? Oh, he's OK. I talked to him after a while about what happened at the wreck. They say of the walking dead that their souls can find no eternal rest, that they exist in torment. If only people could find peace of soul and mind while they're alive. You've had that fire going for two hours now. If Mona could see it, she could have found a way back. But you're inside that tangle you can't see very far. She wouldn't have ventured into the jungle by herself. They have her, I'm sure. We'll have to go after her, then. To the graveyard? I'll go, too. Sure you want to go along? Well, I'd like to help. This won't be on any sightseeing expedition. If they've had her this long, it won't do any good. They'll get you all. Should be right about here. I clocked it on my way back last night. You want to use the very gun again? You want a gun, Doc? No, thanks. I'll take an extra flashlight. All right, let's go. Here's the path. Art and Johnny, you two bring up the rear. Keep a close watch out on both sides. Doc, you stay in the middle. You stay close behind me. Don't fire unless you have to. All right, let's go. Wait a minute. 
Mona's bracelet. It's on the other side of the boulder. The old lady tells me this was a European cemetery for the people who dug the diamonds a hundred years ago. All right, Johnny, you two stay here. Any of them show up, try the flares. You want to come with us? I'll go. Okay, you carry the gasoline. figure on getting out of here, too. Doc, empty the gas on both sides of the door. All right. OK, now, keep your eyes on him. I'll be right behind you. I'll try and hold him back with these flares. She is dead. Let's get out of here. Hello, this is Mr. Livingston. It would appear I have been tasked with requesting you to help our show financially by visiting our patron page. Your generosity will help us keep Creature Features on the air. With only a few dollars a month from you, your kindness will allow us to continue creating new entertainment for your viewing pleasure each and every week. And if you have the desire to give more, you might even receive a gift from Tangela. I think not. Please visit the website below to learn more. Thank you. Portions of this program are brought to you by Micromat making products that keep your Macintosh running at its best. said a word. Maybe she's been drugged or in shock. I think you'd better get her to bed. She's dead. The wife is dead, Mr. Harris. But you saw her walk in here. You all saw her walk. With her eyes, not breathing. Cold as death. I won't listen to that crazy talk. You hear me? Now, no more of it. I'm going to put her to bed. Not in this house. Please, Grandmother. If we can take her out to the ship. No. I know this is your house, but I'm not going to move her tonight. Now, if you're afraid, you get out. I'm not afraid for myself. I'm afraid for you, for all of you. 
Miss Peters, would you help me put it to bed? What about us? Let them stay. First bedroom. We may need them. Mona, why don't you close your eyes and get some sleep? Jeff, you up? How's Mona? Uh, no change. Are you willing to go down tomorrow? Well, the safe's right there. I figure one more dive and we should be able to get to it. Why? You want to pull out? I ought to think about Mona. I ought to get it to a doctor. Then she went for me. Tell Sam to bring up all the big candles he can find. Now, now, force her back to her room. With these, they're afraid of fire. I guess it's the only thing that can destroy them. She's sick, Mrs. Peters. She's out of her head, isn't she? I'm sorry, Mr. Harris. I know exactly how you feel. Or more in the doorway. Far work here. I work underwater too. Keep that blaze like that, and they won't bother you. They'll stay inside. I understand. Unless they have another way out. That's worth a try. We might have them bottled up. Anyway, you and your men will be all right if you stay near the fire. We'll be here. Let's go. The way I figure it, it can't be much of a safe. I should be able to cut it open in five or ten minutes. Now, while I'm burning off the hinges, you stand by with another torch. If any of them do show up, you hold them off with your torch. That fire keeps them out of circulation. It'll be dark before we're through. About that damaged compressor. I'm glad we found out before we dived. We could wait till tomorrow. I thought you wanted to pull out tomorrow and get Mona to day car. Another day won't matter. Look, day or night, it's dark down there. Besides, tomorrow I might have cold feet. Like you got now. OK.
Doc, you take care of the intercom so we can talk to each other, huh? Sure thing, Jeff. Harrison, can you hear me? I hear you. Air pressure okay? Pressure's okay. All right, I'll go ahead. You follow at 10 feet. And watch my line. Go ahead. Good luck, Jeff. Uh, you too, uh, George. This portion of Creature Features is brought to you by CreatureFeaturesStore.com, the official merchandiser of Creature Feature accessories. Welcome back to Creature Features. It's Zombie Night, and it's John Capelos. Very night. good. John Capelos Night, and uh, zombie time. How did they turn her into a zombie? They are not following zombie science. Oh, you know, they they, they a, did something to her. They did something to her. You know, they make it look like it was like a potion, or they talked her into being a zombie. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. They tricked her. They tricked her. All right. But there was no zombies in the relic, were there? No, no. Mm. There were so few zombies off camera in the relic, but that's another right, story. Right, right. The, I think the director was a zombie. <laughs> right. <laughs> Peter so, Himes. How was that filming that film? Well, I mean, there were there there were a couple of incredible actors to work with. There was uh, an actress, a very um, I'm forgetting her name, but she worked on a lot of um, um, of uh, John Ford movies, right. and she was really wonderful. And uh, it was an experience working in that movie. Um, we got a lot. We got wet right. a lot. There was right. a lot of, uh, and then we were working with a Stan Winston monster. Oh, he's the best. And uh, that was kind of interesting. Right. And. Uh, uh, working with Tom Sizemore, which was interesting, and uh, you know he was on the show. Oh, really? He sat yeah. right there, that yeah. same chair, yeah, well, not long ago. He was a, he was kind of a monster in his own right. Yeah, he's interesting. And um, there was kind of a, a synergy between uh, the uh, the cast members in that film. Now, where did you shoot this? We shot uh, in Chicago, uh, the right. Relic, and we right. also shot on the soundstage at Paramount. So you you've done a lot of stuff in Chicago. It's like Hollywood number two for a well, while there. Right? Yeah, I think my first movies in Chicago were Breakfast Club and right. Sixteen Candles, right. and I also shot um, 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 uh, Head Office was in no, that was in Toronto. Where's your favorite place to film? Um, Santa Rosa. Santa Rosa. Yeah. That's a nice. It's close to here. You know, Hitchcock used to love Santa Rosa. Really? Yeah. Really? No. Hitch. I, I. Yeah, I loved working with Hitch. That's I how. Mean, Anywhere to work is good, you know. I've I've shot everywhere. Anywhere but that. What's the most exotic place you've been sent? I've shot a film. I shot a, a mimic sentinel in Romania. Romania. Yeah, yeah. That was My a fun goodness. place where they, sh you know, they would put a big radio mic and so this right. is this is a Russian radio mic. We put right, it here. Right. It's portable. And I right. said no, no, no. This is not portable radio mic. How and, fun. Yeah, but shooting in Romania. I've shot in Spain which was like nice. shot in Cadiz, Spain, and I shot in uh, Mallorca and Madrid with Raul Julia. I did a movie oh, nice. um, about Onassis. Um, I've shot in, uh, oh, I've shot in Manitoba. I've shot in Alberta. I've shot in Newfoundland. I've shot in Florida. It's a great <laughs> way to see the world, is it yeah, not? I've shot in every Canadian province except right. for Quebec. Um, how about, how about uh, Halifax? I've shot in Halifax. Halifax. I shot the River King with Ed Burns oh, nice. in, in, in Halifax. Oh, you know, I've always wanted to move there. I thought, if I ever move away from America, I would go. Oh, Halifax, Halifax is a wonderful place. Yeah, yeah, like the Arm. Place. You know, speaking of Canadians, many of our viewers are Canadian. We, Good. We get, no, the bulk of the mail we get sometimes is, is from Well, you know Canadians. how you spell Canada, right? How? C-A-N-A-D-A. -A -A. That's a good way to do it. All right, what do you say we wrap up this film? Let's go. All right, we're going to wrap up this film, and then uh, when we come back, we're going to find out what you're doing next, right? Yeah. Right? All right. Off we go. Zombies and more Tau. Don't go away, because it's going to be fun. I'm on the bottom. I can 
you hear me, George? I hear you. And I see you. Outside hinges. You know, I think I can get into her with a scout knife. This stuff is burning like firewood. I'll have the first hinge off in a minute. How much longer? Just one more minute. I've got the hinges off. I've got it. I need 10 seconds to get out of here. I can't hold them off. I'm going up. Take me up. Take me up. Send the diver stage down. There are two of them waiting to jump me. Make sure my lines are clear. When I give you the word, start winding away like mad. We understand, Jeff. Give us the word. It worked! Where's Harrison? He's just breaking surface now. They're all over him. Four or five of them. Use the flare. Lost a lot of blood. He's in his cabin. We're running out of flares. Save him. Look, they're coming on board. Get the torches and the kerosene. Yes. Let's see if we can keep it. 
Take it to the cabin and lock yourself in. Floyd? Anything that'll burn? Yeah, in the desk drawer. Give them those lousy diamonds! Don't anybody try that! You got a better idea? Yeah, we'll fight our way out. Who's gonna carry you while I do the fighting? I'll manage. <clears throat> You're in great shape for running. Yeah, I'll be all right in a minute. I'll take this and make a break for it. If I get through, I'll head for shore in the launch. They'll follow me, and that'll give you a chance to get away. Don't try it, Jeff. Bad. Take it. Trying to steal a diamond? Shut up! But he saved your life and mine. That's more than you could do on your bad leg. I know it better than you. This is Livingston, and you're watching Creature Features. Stay tuned. This brief moment of tranquility has been brought to you by Nightscape. Relax and sleep better every single night with this and other videos from our free YouTube channel. Learn more by visiting nightscape.co today. Do. Come on. Maybe she's coming out of it. Mona.
sure have her hypnotized. Come on. So, you succeeded where all the others failed. I thought you might. Listen, there's a whole flock of them after this. I'll be here in a few minutes, and they're playing pretty rough. And I don't want to be around here when they get here. And I don't want Jan around, or you either, Mrs. Peters. I figure we can get into the car, take motor, and clear out. We can meet up with Harrison at Dakar. Well, I'd split my end of the take with you. I figure you've got something coming after all these years. That is, if there is a take. I'm still not sure we found the diamonds. How do you get this open? It's older than the pyramids. They didn't have any springs or screws, of course, but they did know something about levers. Usually. Give me a scarf, quick. Get the launch and start it up. We'll be going back to the boat in two minutes. If any of them show up, hold them off with the torches. <coughs> girl to bring me that chest. Tell her if there's any funny business, I'll shoot you for trying to steal the diamonds and deserting us while we we're under attack. Well, that's not true. He took all the risk himself. Listen, Harrison. I haven't the time. Pee Wee and Johnny are getting steam up. Mike and Tony are waiting at the launch. I'm taking Mona and the diamonds out of here. I just wrote a new deal. Give it to him. Maybe you got it open. How are you gonna know? Oh, please don't. You'll ruin it. I'll find a way. You follow me, I'll kill you. But the diamonds should really be yours. You found them. You saved them. Thanks, Doc. Come here. So fast. Let's get him inside. But you don't even know for sure if they want the diamonds. Maybe they just wanted the chest. We could have seen the end of them. They want the diamonds. They'll be back when they find the chest is empty. <laughs> but how could I destroy them even if I wanted to? Cast them to the wind. Scatter them over the sea so that no man will ever find them. Come with me, Jan. We can be on the ship in a few minutes and out in the bay in ten more. <laughs> Where will they catch us? 
In New York? No matter where you go, they'll follow you. Well, I'll get rid of the diamonds fast. I'll turn them over for cash. They'll be sold in every capital in the world. <laughs> what would they do? Pick at all the jewelry stores in Fifth Avenue? Oh, look, Jan, I want you with me. I want you to enjoy the money, too. I want you to marry me. I think I'd like that, Jeff. I can't go. I can't leave like this. You mean you believe all this, too? That if I jump the diamonds, they'll disappear? Yes, it's true. They'll stop walking the earth. They'll find their eternal rest. The diamonds must be destroyed. You can't rob them of this. Jan. She believes. She spent a lifetime believing. You can't rob her of this. Well, I can't throw them away. Maybe I wish I could. I'm going to take them with me. And you're coming with me, too. Both of you. I can't leave you behind, not when they're still prowling around. I'm staying right here. But you can't stay here now. It's too dangerous. I'm sorry, but if I have to, I'll carry you. I believe you would. We don't have any time, Mrs. Peters. I'll put you off wherever you say. If you like, I'll arrange to get you back here later. Help her in. What are we waiting for? Please, not yet. We're safe enough now. Captain Peter, must you go on? Okay, take them. The diamonds, Mrs. Peters. They're yours. Do what you want with them. Jeremy Peters, at long last. Probably never be rich again. And so ends Zombies of Moratow. That was too easy. Yeah, well, those guys turned out to be good guys at the end, mm -hmm. right? Well, my, uh, but, you, you know, that's the way you get rid of zombies in 1957. You know, I think what it was, was you could not shoot zombies in the head in 1957 because yeah. of the, the TV laws. Yeah, well, you know, but mm -hmm. that's the way you did it in those days. No, but you've never acted as a zombie, have you? Is this a trick question? No, no, it is a no. It's an amazing question because if you have not been a zombie, I'm going to ask if you've been the person who shoots a zombie. Never really nailed that part. No. It's very, very difficult. And right. Hollywood these days, you know, there's a lot of ageism. I'm over a certain age now, and you know, they're really giving those parts a little lot younger. I you could know, see you portraying sort of the, the Benedict Cumberbatches of the world are getting those parts. No, no, I can see you portraying a a person who's been hunting zombies for a long time, and you teach younger people how to do it. Right, let, let me let me give it a shot right now. That's it. Now, yeah. it's confidence. That's that's how you kill zombies. You need confidence. That's you need that more than a gun. Yeah, right? I right? feel it. I that's feel true. it. Yeah, that's true. All right, it's uh -huh. been ridiculous, but I love it. Yeah. What are you doing next, John? Well, um, I'm going to EDD. Going to fill EDD? out a few forms at uh, unemployment development. At, at, a busy actor like you, I, I don't. I yeah, don't. and then I'm going to go to Walmart and fill out a you know maybe get a job at Walmart. <laughs> I don't know. 
Well, I'm um, sure there's more roles for you. Perhaps a zombie. Maybe thing. to roll a target. You know, is it? Uh, you know, they've. Uh, you know, um, I don't know. A couple, couple places, maybe. No, I actually, uh, um, I got a, a show that I called Mayor of Koreatown that I'm developing right now. Oh, you are? And hopefully we're going to get that up and running. Nice. That was, that was acting, folks, about the Walmart he's thing. He's good. <laughs> no, he's, he's very good. He had me fooled for a and, moment. And uh, maybe a job at Penguin's Yogurt. Um, and a few other things we're developing. We... The royal we. So, are you going to be strictly behind camera on this, or are you going to be in front? No, as the well? mayor of Koreatown is something that I'm um, writing with a couple of other people, and that hopefully will get up, and I'll be acting in as well right, as some. Um, right. Wonderful. Directing and writing. As you should be. Right. I understand Suffering. you do some music work as well. I do. Right. I have an album called Too Hip for the Room that's currently out on room. Spotify. And what's your acts? My acts? Right. Yes. I play you? the guitar. The I guitar? play a nice. bit of piano, and Very I nice. sing. Mm -hmm. Three axes? Three axes, three, no waiting. Three, three axes person. That, that mm. makes you three dimensional, which is yes. good. All right. Well, I'm I the axis. I want to thank you for coming oh, on the show and you. watching the movie with us. Thank and you. Uh, next time you're in town, yes. you must pop in and say hello again. I shall and will. And uh, we, will, uh, we will find out what you're doing next. Yes, yes, yes. But as far as you guys go, thank you so much for watching the show tonight. We know you could have been watching, like, the Farm Report or something like that. Mm. News. They watch, you know, if they don't watch us, they watch the news. And they know the news is bad, so they watch it, us because they get good news, right? Mm -hmm. Right, right. We will see you next week. Different guests, different movie. I don't know who, but it will be fun. So don't go away and don't forget, we love you. So, uh, John. Yes. You know, Kelly LeProc. What? You know, we, we've been trying to get her on our program, and we haven't been able to find her. Maybe maybe you could give us, give us some help with that. Are you kidding? She wouldn't come on your program with you looking like that.